oh, look at this, a new podcast to oversaturate the already saturated world of podcasts from me, world-renowned YouTube critic Rendon Lovell. My name's Rendon Lovell, and welcome to the Rencast, my own podcast about movies, because I like movies. And basically, the idea of this podcast that I've wanted to do for a little bit um, is just to have a segment or something that I could do that'd be super easy, not very time consuming, and just a way for me to talk more about things that I'm seeing or things that I like or things that I want to see that are maybe underappreciated or um, undervalued and, and things I kind of wouldn't be able to, and maybe that's not the right word, maybe things I wouldn't normally talk about. And this, I think, could give me a good outlet into just doing off-the-cuff kind of reviews about whatever I feel like doing. So on this historic occasion, the first episode of the Runcast, I want to talk about a movie that very, very few people have seen that I had only, I hadn't seen until like uh, a few days ago now, it's called Alps, a movie from Greek director Yorgos Lanthimos, most popularly known for The Lobster, Killing of a Sacred Deer, Dogtooth, and Alps. And this is a movie that I really didn't know how to watch it or where to watch it, and I wasn't sure about it to be frank. I didn't know what or what it was or even if I wanted to see it, but since I like the lobster so much and because I love Killing of a Sacred Deer, I was like, okay, I'm gonna figure out a way to see this. And turns out it's on Amazon Prime, so it was super easy to find. And I saw the movie and it's it's bizarre. Um, if you have if you've seen any of Yorgos Lanthimos's other movies, you know how odd and quirky all of his movies are in a very dark way. All of his movies have this incredibly stilted and regimented dialogue and very uh, contrasting in a way um, filmmaking. And Alps really isn't any different compared to the other two, except it's not really that interesting to be frank, um, I, I still like this movie. I still think Alps is a good movie. I think it's even a, a pretty good movie because of the story and the unique concept pretty much on its own. I think the concept of the movie and the execution of that concept is the best part of the movie and it's really what is the only thing that makes this movie remotely interesting. So basically, um, the movie's about this this team, if you will, these four people that essentially pretend to be deceased people. So they, they go to recently deceased parents or loved ones or siblings and say, we can substitute this person that died. We can become this person for you. And the first four times that we do it is free you can see how you like it and then from then on you can pay us to become the person that you lost that you loved and pretend like they're still alive and maybe it'll help with the grief process and that's sort of the idea of alps is just that these four people go to all these other people across their city and just pretend to be other people and that's a really weird, unique idea that I, I really appreciated, and it does lend itself really well to building tension and uncomfor uncomfortability. I don't know if that's a word, but it, it lends itself super well into making this movie feel kind of gross in a way, because you watch these people say these very specific things to these people that have just lost somebody and these very specific things that these people are saying are very specific things that the person that died said and so they're basically just reenacting their lives and it, and it makes for some really compelling really well constructed sequences where 
the stilted dialogue that Yorgos Lanthimos typically has in his movies works super well because they're literally scripting these scenes. These people and the people that um, they're working with literally script out these scenes. You don't see this, but it just shows you like the aftermath of um, the scripting. It shows the scene playing out in a way. And it builds this incredible tension. It's weird. It's weird to say that. It, the whole movie, I just kind of felt gross. There's a lot of really wonderful scenes where uh, one that sticks out in my brain is the main character is pretending to be a recently deceased uh, teenage tennis player. And she goes to the family because she works at a hospital so she ha can get like firsthand these people that have just lost somebody and then immediately say I can substitute for them um, and that sort of also lends into the weirdness of the movie is that she the main character is so sociopathic in a lot of ways where these people have just lost somebody and then she's basically selling them something because that person just died and so it, it makes the main character very interesting in that sense where she sees all this death and she pretends to be these people's dead person and she seems completely unfazed by it and that's i think what makes the scene so uncomfortable and going back to what i was just talking about the the scene where she is pretending to be this deceased tennis player and yorgos directs these scenes in a very simplistic way there's not a lot of camera movement it's just like very locked down, pretty simple cinematography, but he he places people in the backgrounds and then has them doing these specific things that makes the scene even more odd and awkward than it could be if somebody else was helming it. And the, the scene that I'm thinking of is the main character is pretending to be this girl and the girl's boyfriend comes over and the main character is pretending to be the girl, the girlfriend to this boy. And so you're, you're watching the scene and it's this teenage boy and this sort of middle age-ish woman pretending to be his girlfriend. And it makes the scene so uncomfortable because she's like, she starts like taking off her shirt and you're like, ah, oh, that's so weird. And then you see in the background, like near the doorway, you can see um, the deceased girl's parents are just standing there in the doorway. And you're like, what are they doing there? Why why are they just standing there? And then as the scene progresses, she starts taking off her shirt and the parents take like one step into the room and they go, oh no, I didn't know you'd be home so soon. And that's when you realize that it's a very specific um, scene from th these people's lives that actually happened that they're just replaying essentially and it's the parents bursting in and finding their deceased daughter and her boyfriend having this moment together and then it's this middle-aged woman that's doing it now and it makes the scene so uncomfortable and there's so many wonderful scenes like that where there's another scene i'm remembering where the there's a an old grandma who's blind and two of the people are helping her and one of them pretends to be her husband and so um she's the main character's talking with the grandma and they're just having a nice conversation and then the old guy comes in the room and says i'm gonna go off to work and he walks to the door and closes it and then oh well opens it and closes it and then sits down next to it and these scenes are easily the highlight of the movie because they really do such a great job of highlighting the weirdness of this thing that these people are doing. Yorgos Lanthimos fully acknowledges how strange, odd, and bizarre the central idea of the movie is by recreating these scenes in this specific way. And I don't know if this is making any sense to anybody. I feel like I'm not explaining it super well, but it seems like Yorgos loved executing the idea more than actually making a movie in a sense like of course he makes this movie and he seems to have a lot of fun making it but i think the biggest issue with alps is that it's not 
really that compelling. Uh, outside of the scenes where um, these people are substituting for deceased people, there's not that much that's happening. There's not that much that's interesting. I mean, you see the main character doing her kind of daily routine. She goes to different people and kind of interacts with them. And it does create this weird aura about the movie where you're not sure what's real and you're not sure what's fake. It's actually an incredibly compelling way that Yorgos has kind of meta commentary in his movie where you're not sure where the movie starts and the movie ends and the the weird scripted stuff inside the movie is. And so that all is very interesting and works super well, but there's not that much outside of that. And that's my biggest issue here is that, for example, Killing of a Sacred Deer or The Lobster have these very distinct messages attached to them. You know, The Killing of a Sacred Deer talks a lot about religion. It has a lot of religious commentary woven into it. And The Lobster is very, um, it pokes a lot of fun at relationships. It deals with relationships and shows how like simple-minded people can get if like sexuality is threatened. It's, it's very interesting stuff that Killing of a Sacred Deer and The Lobster plays with, but Alps, I n didn't really get the sense that it was playing with any commentary or any, yeah, any interesting themes. There wasn't any themes or commentary that I felt were woven through the movie, and it does feel like Yorgos maybe thought that the scripted scenes inside the scripted movie were enough, but they're not. And that's the most disappointing thing, is that I was hoping for more to be under the surface, and there really isn't. Um, I do like the main character, and I like her character. She's just basically a sociopath. I don't know how long she's been doing this practice of just substituting for deceased people, but it definitely seems to have taken a toll on her, and the last, like, act, the last third of the movie is her just completely spiraling out of control, and that's all great, but she's really the only character with any character. Um, there are a few other quote-unquote main characters or supporting characters here, and I did not connect with them or find them interesting in the slightest. They don't have a lot of screen time, to be honest, and I feel like they were woefully underwritten. Um, the, like grand master of this uh, Alps group is this weird guy with a mustache and that's like it. That's like his character trait is uh, an intense man with a mustache and then there's an old guy that's like he's an old guy and then there's a other girl and it's like she's a younger girl and maybe that's intentional in a way where that's all that these people that have deceased loved ones are looking for is just a vague match to the person they lost and, and maybe maybe Yorgos thought that maybe he's like okay we're gonna have these people be these specific vague people because it'll be it'll tie into the meta-ness of the movie but I really don't think so I did not get that feeling and mainly it is because they don't hold that much weight to the movie they don't really affect the main character that much, and they don't really interact with the main character all that much, and you don't necessarily see their life or their backstory, you don't hear a lot about them, they're just kind of co-workers to this main girl, and that was really disappointing for me. Uh, the Lobster and the Killing of a Sacred Deer has these wonderful fleshed out characters from the main cast to the supporting cast, and they're all really quirky and interesting and funny, like John C. Riley and The Lobster Springs to Mind, but Alps doesn't have that, and even our main character is so stone-faced and unfazed by things that often it can translate to boredom, and it's weird because that, I, I know that that's the point of the character is that she is a sociopath. She doesn't have empathy for these people, really. She's just doing a job and then doing another job and then doing another job. I get that, but a lot of times when she's not doing the job or when I assume she's not doing the job, she still acts like this. Even with people around her, she acts exactly how she does 
as the substitute. So I don't really care about the main character. I don't care about the side characters. And with the lack of depth, I would say, the lack of commentary, the lack of themes to the movie, it's not one that I really want to or would care to rewatch. It's something that it, it, it's sort of a novelty because of the weird, bizarre, quirky story and concept at the heart of it, and the way that Yorgos executes it is very interesting and original and hilarious, but aside from that, there isn't that much, and that's why I think I would call this movie more of a novelty than anything, because you watch it, it's a lot of fun while you're in it, and then you leave it and say, okay, I don't need that anymore. It's, it's like whenever a company comes out with a limited edition thing, like Oreo releasing the fireworks Oreo. You get them, you buy them, you eat them, and you say, these are weird, they're kind of good, but I'd rather just have the original. And that's sort of, in a weird way, an analogy to this movie, where I'm like, this is weird, this is original, this is fun, but I'd just rather have Killing of a Sacred Deer. I'd rather have The Lobster before I would have this movie again. So, at the end of the day, I think I would recommend it. I think it's good enough to see at least once, definitely. I think it is just interesting enough to say that it is good and to recommend it. So I think I would recommend it. Just know that when you're going into this movie, it's weird. It's strange. Um, you don't get a lot of answers very quickly, and it is very methodically paced. So know that going in, and when you do know that going in, I think it is a fun experience. It's not necessarily a rewarding experience, but it is an entertaining movie, and I think maybe that's all that Yorgos was going for. And if that is all that he was going for, he definitely achieved it, in my opinion. So that's something I would recommend overall. Um, but yeah, that's Alps. That's all I have to say about Alps. It's uh, 19 minutes of me saying things about Alps. And that's it. That's that's it. That's the podcast. So, podcast episode one in the books, everyone. Um, in the future, I, I'll i be posting these podcasts every Saturday, um, every week. They require very little editing. They require very little time. So, I feel like these would be very simple to upload every week, very easy to upload every week. And it would make... Um, me making these highly edited film reviews or couch commentaries, it'd make the process of doing that a little bit more bearable and feel like, well, not bearable. I still, I really enjoy doing it. I really enjoy doing the film reviews and the couch commentary. I love doing it. I love working on them. But um, sometimes there is a, like a rush to do them where I'm like, oh, I have this great idea. I love doing it. Let me get this out as quickly as possible so, so people can... Um, enjoy it, but maybe sometimes because of that I release things a little bit earlier than I want to. So I think with the podcast just going up every week, once a week, like clockwork, um, it'll make me um, wanting to do like another pass on an edit um, a little bit more. I would want to edit something a little bit longer, um, really make sure that it is exactly what I want it to be. So I think that this podcast will help with that. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, in the future, it won't just be me talking. I'm sure that will be plenty of episodes of just me talking about something, whatever I want to talk about. But um, I'll probably bring on some of my friends to talk about movies. We all, a lot, all of my friends love movies. So I'll br probably bring on some friends and uh, other people to chat with me about whatever movie we feel like talking about. So yeah, that's it. Goodbye now.